Mutations when DNA changes. Having just mastered how our bodies use our genes in order to make proteins and thus our traits, uh, it seems appropriate to address what happens when there's a change in the genes. These changes are generally referred to as mutations, and here are a couple overarching questions we will attempt to answer about mutations over the course of this unit. First of all, what is a mutation? Next, what causes mutations? Others, what kinds of mutations are there? Can a mutation be harmful, beneficial, benign? And are mutations always passed down from parent to offspring? In this particular video, we will be addressing the first three questions. In order to understand the way mutations work, however, we need to be masters of the central dogma as it occurs normally in our cells. So just as a reminder, we start off with our genotype in the form of DNA hidden inside the nucleus of our cells, uh, which our cells then transcribe into an RNA message, which you can see right here. Here goes the RNA message. The RNA message can then leave the nuclear envelope, go out into the cytoplasm, where ribosomes will turn it into a protein, which is the doer molecule. Um, as those proteins do particular things in our bodies, that causes us to have a particular phenotype. Given this progression, you can see how if there were a change in the DNA, that change would then get carried down through the RNA, through the protein, and eventually affect the way we look, potentially. But there are all sorts of things that affect our phenotype, so why would we think that these particular differences in phenotype are caused by a change in the DNA? Well, stories like this often give us a clue as to why. All ten of these siblings shown in this picture died from early onset Alzheimer's disease. How unlikely is that to happen just because of environment? Surely all of them were growing up in different households, eating different foods, being exposed to different uh, things during the course of their lives, yet they all suffered from the exact same disease. This suggests very strongly that there was a change that occurred in their parents' DNA that then got passed down to all of them. The causes of these DNA changes are referred to as mutagens. They are uh, chemicals or types of radiation that can cause mutations. And here are some examples of some sources. It's well known, for example, that cigarette smoke um, has lots of toxins in it and those toxins can cause often lung cancer and then other types of cancer. Uh, similarly, tanning, so whether that's out in the sun or in a tanning bed such as this one, exposes your skin cells to lots of radiation. When that radiation strikes your DNA molecules, it can cause a change in the letters. And then sometimes we even use mutagens when we're trying to check for someone's health, like this little guy right here is about to have an x-ray taken of his jaw to see how his teeth are aligned but there are x-rays coming out of that machine. Now luckily the dentist put this large apron on this kid which is made out of iron and it's really heavy uh, and that means that uh, the kid's gonads are being protected from radiation so at least it's not so likely that a mutation will happen inside his testicles. That's good because then he won't pass on this mutation to his kids. However, it's still possible that this radiation uh, could cause a mutation inside his face, uh, facial region. And for that reason, when you go to the doctors and they're going to give you an x-ray for something, be sure to ask them if it's absolutely necessary. Because every time you get exposed to a little more x-rays, that's yet another chance for you to get a mutation. Radiation can so easily cause mutations that whenever there's a disaster involving a radioactive material, you know, people need to check each other's bodies to make sure that they don't have any of that radioactivity inside of them. So you can see here right after the earthquake and tsunami of March 12th on uh, 2011, uh, this little Japanese boy right here is having his arms held out to the sides so that this gentleman can check for the amount of radioactivity that he might have been exposed to after the nuclear power plant at Fukushima exploded and released all of its radioactive materials into the nearby environment. So why are mutagens such a big deal? Well, they can cause mutations. In other words, a change in a DNA sequence. And as you guys know, if the DNA sequence is changed, that means the RNA sequence is changed, the protein is changed, and perhaps the organism's phenotype is changed. 
Now there are two major classes of mutations. Point mutations are going to be the focus of this video lecture. So that includes uh, two things, one called a base pair substitution, where one nucleotide is changed to another. And then there are insertions and deletions, in which letters are added or removed. Either way, these are known as point mutations because they happen at a single point or a single nucleotide along the DNA sequence. In contrast, in chromosomal mutations, either entire chunks of a chromosome go missing or even an entire chromosome goes missing. Even sometimes you have an extra of a chromosome. Either way, this can also cause severe defects, uh, and we'll talk about chromosomal mutations uh, at another time. Let's focus on the mutations that happen at one point in the DNA, starting with the base pair substitutions. Now, as the name implies, one base pair, or one nitrogenous base, changes, and that could have several effects. First of all, perhaps there could be a missense mutation. That occurs when one letter is subbed for another letter, such that a new amino acid occurs in the protein. For example, let's say that a change happened in some DNA. The original sequence said CAA, so the RNA sequence would be GUU, and the amino acid coded for would be valine. If a mutation occurred causing the DNA to change to CGA, then the RNA would read GCU instead, which would instead code for, let's see, GCU alanine. So we ended up with a new amino acid that might cause the protein to function abnormally. What if a DNA sequence turned from AGT into ACT? While the original sequence transcribed into UCA, which codes for serine, ACT transcribes to UGA, which is a stop codon. If this sort of mutation were to happen inside a protein, it would stop the ribosome before it got to the end of making the protein, and the protein construction would be aborted. So nonsense mutations are some of the worst mutations out there. Contrast that with the benign silent mutation. For example, if CAA tr was turned into CAG, both of the resulting codons still result in the same amino acid. GUU and GUC still both code for valine. So silent mutations have no effect on the protein, nor on the phenotype. Beyond missense, nonsense, and silent mutations, there are two other kinds of point mutations, and they are called insertions and deletions. As their name implies, this occurs when a single base pair is inserted, or put in, or deleted, taken out, of a DNA sequence. Insertions and deletions can be so damaging because they cause something called frame shift. This is best illustrated if we picture the DNA molecule as a sentence of three letter words, since eventually the DNA gets turned into mRNA, which is read as codons. So let's use this example sentence of the fat cat ate the wee rat. We call this the wild type because it's the original sequence, or the one that would occur in an organism in the wild. But if it gets mutated, then we start to see a change. So for example, if an A is inserted partway into the sentence, let's say in the middle of the word fat, then that means now when you read three letters at a time, you have the fat, tat, which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Similarly, if we deleted the A instead of inserting another one, we have the f t k a t t t h u i r a t. Okay. Again, makes no sense. So the point is, when you have an insertion or a deletion mutation, it causes not just the codon where the mutation occurs to mess up, but but also all of the subsequent sequences including what ends up in the mRNA. So all the other codons are messed up, which means that then when the ribosome goes to read it, it inserts all of the wrong amino acids in those spots. So insertions and deletions can cause big disasters because they cause this frame shift, this shift in the reading frame. So if our frame was originally surrounding 
these three letters, and then these three letters. Now it's surrounding these three letters and these three letters. The reading frame used to be right here around the word cat, but it got shifted in that direction thanks to the uh, insertion mutation, and so now the reading frame is thrown off. To summarize, let's review the types of point mutations, or mutations that occur when a single nucleotide changes. First, there are base pair substitutions in which one wrong nucleotide supplants or replaces uh, a previously correct nucleotide. And there are three different kinds of base pair substitutions. Nonsense mutations, which result in an early stop codon. Missense mutations, in which the wrong amino acid is put into the protein. And silent mutations, which result in no change to the amino acid sequence in the protein. But then you've got your other class of point mutations. Frame shift mutations in which there are missing or added nucleotides. They're called insertions when they're added and deletions when they're missing. Lastly, I'll note that these categories aren't totally distinct because sometimes when an insertion or a deletion occurs, it can result in an early stop codon when the reading frame is shifted or sometimes in just a whole series of incorrect amino acids. So for that reason, I'm going to just add a little dotted line here, indicating that frameshift mutations can also cause some nonsense and some missense.